Hello, this video will be yesterday I posted one in regards to Abracadabra and various versions. Uh, origins uh, of this uh, connects to well, Gnosis, early Christianity, uh, Greco-Roman times, even uh, links to Egypt. But uh, so I'm going to extend that out and do one. Uh, so I'll be looking at superstitions and and witchcraft especially, and well, black cats, Friday the Thirteenth, lucky horseshoes, these types of uh, things. Now. Uh, superstitions stay with us today. Uh, now their well, their origins is very non-Christian, let's say. Uh, however, they linger with us, and so we've, uh, here's some examples of classic ones. But uh, their origins seem to be very, very strongly connected to witchcraft and protection from witchcraft, let's say. And so, well. Um, these are innocent enough, but making a birthday wish, uh, birthday wish by blowing out candles. This is one superstition that we still use and is, you know, taken as innocent enough. Uh, christening a ship by breaking a sacrificial bottle at the launch, and that's a. Now we use champagne, but there are other nice little links uh, into well earlier versions of this particular ritual ceremony. It's like cornerstone ceremonies, this type of thing. They still stay with us, but they have these very old. Let's just call it pagan origins. I don't use pagan in a negative sense. I'm just using it as in pre-Christian um, era. Christmas trees is another example. Now, Christmas trees is very, relatively new, so only really about the 1840s did it start, and they were made fashionable by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. And he introduced the Christmas tree. He was from Germany, and uh, and Christmas trees, pine trees would be brought into the house during winter, and this greenery in the house was part of a pagan tradition, a ritual. So to, you know, so that, especially in the Northern Hemisphere here in Australia, we have gum trees, so we have greenery all year round. But in the Northern Hemisphere, when the winter time comes, they lose the leaves and, and there's a change. But so, for instance, you would bring in a pine tree and this would encourage greenery um, to return or fertility, agriculture uh, to return. And so even the Christmas trees got absolutely nothing to do in the biblical sense it is a modern tradition a superstition let's call it that again i'm using superstition in a in a non-negative uh sort of sense as well because well, everyone has superstitions and it's curious to see how many you know so-called rational modernist uh, modernist people actually still engage in superstitions but they don't realize it uh or some anyway uh somehow rationalize it as something else but what also happened was that this witchcraft superstition was very strong and very prevalent and around about the 1700s, 1800s, uh, especially there was a, not only the industrial revolution and, and the growth of science, but also the church was clamping down on these older pagan traditions. And so what happened was a lot of, uh, for instance, the, the horseshoe and things such as this, they were recast in a different light. And we'll get, we'll get to that soon enough. But uh, for instance, this is... Uh, of a Somme mud, piece. oh geez, I forget the name. Uh, it was basically a biography about a World War One experience. But this is a picture of him when it when he was a child. He was a boy, but it was not uncommon to dress boys as girls to disguise them from, especially first male boys, uh, to dress them as girls to pr basically to protect them from witchcraft. So they would grow girls' hair and they would wear girls' dresses, girl shoes, and all this type of stuff. So this was. Um, now it's not so prevalent, but uh, we still sort of see it. And I couldn't find any definite links, but very uh, pretty confident. Well, christening dresses, and so when a young um, boy is christened, they you know this of giving giving dressing him up basically as a girl by wearing a christening dress. It's even called a dress, and that might be another connection because especially uh, uh, superstitions in regards to. Not so much now, but you know, I remember like uh, relatives and other people, who, um, especially from uh, Europe, to they would keep the child hidden and and away because of the high infant mortality and because of uh, uh, their belief that it had a lot to do with evil spirits and witchcraft, and so that's one legacy of it. Uh, now, Striga, uh, Striga or Screech Owl is where my parents come from in Istra uh, on the. Uh, Slovenian at the top of the Adriatic Sea. Uh, so this was Teta Anna. She was the local uh, village witch. Uh, some interesting stories in regards to what my father told me about uh, what happened there. But you know, 
anyway, she, she was a lovely lady. And there were a few curious things when I was a child and when we visited that happened. But let's, you know, that wouldn't stay. But uh, Strix is, Striga comes from the earlier Roman term Strix or Screech Owl. And uh, we're well, still the prevalence of owls and and so I'll, again, I'll put a bunch of links in the description anyway. But uh, Strix Striga uh, Screech Owl, and this is a picture of Goya. Now again, witches traditionally the pic pictures would have the broomstick facing forward. I remember there was an outcry of some Wiccan coven because in Harry Potter they would have the broomstick with the with the broom at the back, but the older you know the, let's just say the original ones would have the brooms forward, but Again, uh, it's interesting, he has the owl, screech owl. These European traditions were imported to Australia, and Australia is an excellent place, not just for weights and measures and architecture, because, well, we've been, we haven't had sort of a war or revolution, so uh, what was imported, we've got a strong uh, link, um, even street plans and all this stuff, but so famous Sydney Harbour Bridge, and just over here is the Rocks, Dawes Point area, and uh, historic area tip of a hat uh, to uh, Jack Mundy and those who preserved this historic part of Sydney and we uh, a lot of our historic buildings were preserved by Jack Mundy and his people and the Green Band so again tip of a hat to him but um, so when they were doing some archaeology in this historic part of Sydney they found a lot of uh, amongst well children's shoes would be hidden in there and this was a, a belief especially in the roof area to confuse the witch or the evil spirit uh, and so they wouldn't because again high infant, infant mortality and not a good level of access to medical care and even at that time the medical care probably wasn't the best but but was also found and I couldn't find a picture of the, the website seems to have disappeared but uh, for the harbour bridge climb uh, in the pylons they, they drilled uh, like a tunnel a passage in there and buried inside the mortar, they found uh, children's shoes. So uh, again, and this was in 1932. So just another example how it's, it's it sort of carried on. So the rocks was early um, 1800s, but it's still at least in the Sydney Harbour Bridge that tradition uh, carried on. Now here's an interesting one. Again, this link will be in the description. But this is in Tasmania, and there are other versions of this around Australia in historic, very old homesteads, courthouses. Uh, they found these, it's the flower of life, this very important uh, geometry. And this was, or they call it the hexafoil or the daisy wheel, uh, with different names for it, uh, the, uh, or the seed of life. But they, well, okay, links will be in the description, but they found it in multiple uh, places as well, using this as a sigil or a, uh, uh, an incantation to protect from bewitchment, especially if, like plagues, diseases, you know, at that time, so that was a protection, which is an interesting, like, two geometry. But this goes back again to Roman times. Uh, this is in Antioch, but you'll find this all over the ancient world. So this is the Osiron in Egypt, and we have that same geometry there as well. Now, I'm not saying that was the reason for it, but it, again, this geometry just carries on throughout time across the world, and yeah, so G for geometry. Now, I'll be referencing this uh, excellent book I've got, uh, Dictionary of Superstitions. It's really well-researched, referenced, and uh, but now let's have a look at horseshoes. And so we have two things, lucky horseshoes. And, okay, so this horseshoe still has nails in it. Anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, and the horseshoe over the door, and even see the old farrier's nails in there, and that's an important feature. But So horseshoes on the threshold. So these ones are well on the outside of the door and that one, and this one's on the inside of it all. Now this horseshoe is really the one that's worth looking at because now we, now we say that it's a good luck symbol. Not really. No, it's uh, it's actually a protection against witchcraft. And again, this had to do at the time where, especially the church um, and the growth of science, that type of thing, uh, superstition was discouraged. And so these horseshoes are actually protection against witches and evil spirits, but it, they were recast are relabeled as a good luck symbol because that would protect you from being um, mocked or, or yeah, sort of teased by the reverend. I, you can pause to read it further, but basically, shoes at the horseshoes at the threshold are, and and it's good this particular book because it lists the older, so beginning 1584 up until 1986, and but the older the original version is, it's a protection against 
uh, witchcraft, e uh, evil uh, spirits entering entering the house. I've also heard that uh, it would also be so. Uh, you, for instance, you would have one nail at the bottom, and if the horseshoe tipped upside down, because the horseshoe typically should be facing upwards like a cup, if it tips upside down, that was a sign to say that that person was a, a witch or you know warlock, demon, whatever you want to call it. So shoe holds shoe horseshoes at the threshold are. Um, not good luck, but actually protection, and it's interesting. Okay, now, so yeah, so horseshoes inside of a door are uh, protection from witchcraft, evil, evil spirits, and this will connect because Eva mentions that this particular um, would be used, and especially if people had never taught the Lord's Prayer, that connects back to uh, abracadabra, and how this was an amulet to protect against disease, and well, uh, this, well, especially this type of thing. So that's a nice little link there in itself. Uh, again, you can pause now um, and how horseshoes were hung. And again, if you read through there, you can see how it's morphed more from a protection to a good luck charm. And for instance, now this is in 1982, this reference, but again, it will connect to the older references. Uh, now, a horseshoe is, uh, if you find a, a lucky horseshoe must be found. You can't buy one. Uh, so... For instance, it's not only it's only for a souvenir because it won't be lucky because I didn't find it. Now it's also important that they referenced the number of horseshoe nails in found in the horseshoe would be how many years good luck you have. Also, finding any item of iron was considered lucky at that time again because the the value of iron at the time. So again, you can uh, read through those. Now horseshoe again lucky to find, and so again you can. Uh, pause and read and fr read through. But for instance, horseshoe nail. Uh, the the holes clear of nails to be counted and and got to. Okay, I picked up a horseshoe the other day, brought it home, and it was struggling to remove. Uh, anyway, yeah. So you can read through those. And okay, so the number of nails left in a horseshoe would be an indicator of the good luck left in it. But hanging a horseshoe over your door was a protection, not a good luck charm. And so you could buy or, or, you know, you didn't have to find a horseshoe to, to at least in, um, for that to, to be powerful. But a lucky horseshoe had to be found. And with, okay, now I'll put a bunch of links in the description. Okay, there's Strix and Streak. Now, uh, for instance here, especially to do with uh, superstitions, like so burying shoes under the doorstep or in the roof, uh, for protection and how many shoes were found in there as I mentioned the Sydney Harbour Bridge they found one in there as well again some more links in regards to this and the, uh, b the belief at the time of the using baby shoes especially to protect because again high infant mortality at the time uh, hidden shoes uh, again one was found in the Sydney Harbour Bridge but especially in the Rocks his historic area Yeah, this is interesting because this is again this will be in the description. But the flower of life, how how often it's found and connected with uh, protection as a as a yeah protection against evil spirits, witchcraft, uh, disease. Basically, at the time again, high disease, uh, low um, medical care. Mummified cats is another frequent thing that they find usually above the door or under the door and it's even found in churches and other things. Again, all links in the description. This would be a protection uh, as well. And this is in... Yeah, anyway, so uh, clothes, shoes, but especially this flower of life, cats being uh, buried at the doorstep. Again, hexafoil or the, the flower of life uh, here in Australia to protect against uh, spirits and Halloween. All Hallows Eve was now it's like a kid sort of thing, but it was a different belief back at the time. It was the, the, the festival of the dead essentially. This is also in Queensland, so we have them in Tasmania and Queensland again across the world through time. As, and again, this will be in the description. These are some examples of uh, recent. Um, archaeology around uh, Australia to the earliest periods and always finding shoes, cats and this uh, 
flower of life symbol. So with that, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.